Hello, and welcome to the Entrepreneurial Mindset Workshop. My name is Alexis Lenahan, and I am absolutely thrilled to be here and honored to have been asked to be a part of the MindShift Conference. I hope you've had an incredible experience so far. I know that uh, this conference is such a wonderful opportunity filled with value and knowledge and great connections. So I hope you've enjoyed yourself so far. Um, I want to take some time with you today and talk about um, a topic that I actually love talking about, which is the entrepreneurial mindset. I'm going to share my screen with you because I've got a few slides to help uh kind of to help go through this conversation with you today. So I want to talk to you about the entrepreneurial mindset, what it is, what it's not, and how to develop it. Um, but first, who am I? Why am I here? Why are you listening to me? Well, like, like I said, uh, when in the beginning of this of this uh, workshop, my name is Alexis Lenahan. Um, I am a faculty member here at Mohawk College in the business department. I am also an entrepreneur, a business owner, and a certified high performance coach. I love all things personal and professional development, so much so I made a career out of it. Um, and I work with individuals and groups to help them achieve high performance in every area of their life. Now, what is high performance, you ask? I'm glad you did. High performance, uh, I define it as heightened and sustained um, performance consistently over the long term while maintaining optimum health and positive relationships. So I work not specifically, but quite a bit with entrepreneurs and business owners around topics just like the one we're going to talk about today, around their mindset. Um, I strongly believe that you can reach you know, top levels of success without sacrificing your mental health, without sacrificing your physical health or those important relationships that you have, um, or just, you know, that, that joy that life can bring. And so I work with individuals to sort of help them find that healthy balance um, while still performing, you know, um, at their peak. So enough about me. What are we going to talk about today? We are going to really quickly just talk about what an entrepreneur is and some common myths around entrepreneurship um, that I have heard over and over in conversations with, uh, with clients, with students, with friends, with my network. Um, and so I want to debunk a few of those for you. And then we'll dive right into the entrepreneurial mindset, what it is, and what are some of the key characteristics of this type of mindset? So what is an entrepreneur? So I often get asked, like, what's the difference between an entrepreneur and a, and a business owner? Um, an entrepreneur is typically defined as someone who starts their own business, usually by taking great personal risks. Um, and I, to me, um, and this is my own definition now between, an, you know, the difference between an entrepreneur and a business owner is an entrepreneur just takes it one step further in terms of their vision, in terms of um, maybe growth and scale of their business. Um, and expanding into different opportunities. Entrepreneurs can also be multi-passionate, right? And take on multiple businesses uh, or projects. So that's kind of how I see a little bit of the difference between an entrepreneur versus a, uh, a business owner. An entrepreneur is a business owner, but I think they just take it one step further in the way that they see things and the visions that they have for themselves and their business. Okay, what are some common myths? Now I hear uh, a lot around entrepreneurship and one of the biggest myths, I've got four of them here for you, there are plenty, um, but these are kind of the most common ones I've heard, that entrepreneurs are born hustlers. Either you're, you're born with it or not. And that could not be furthest from the truth. It is not a, you know, a genetic trait that is passed on that you can inherit from your parents. <laughs> you know, even if your entire family uh, runs their own businesses, doesn't mean that that is your destiny as well. And on the flip side of that, it means that you can be an entrepreneur, even if you're, if nobody in your family is, or has even thought about opening their own business. Um, to me, it is, you know, being an entrepreneur is it happens through cultivating and developing skills. Um, you know, no baby is born and, uh, you know, with a, a particular talent that is going to lead to entrepreneurship. So rest assured, whether you think, you know, whether you think you have it or you don't, it is something that if you want it bad enough, you can cultivate and create for yourself. The second myth is that 
Um, in order to be an entrepreneur, you need to have this groundbreaking original idea. And I think that this myth hold some people back from even attempting to start their own business because they, they think that they don't have a unique or an original idea. Listen, you don't have to reinvent the wheel to be an entrepreneur. There is absolutely nothing wrong with taking an existing idea and making it your own, right? Maybe you expand on it. Maybe just the way that you deliver it is different. As long as you're not um, you know, stealing anybody else's ideas or patents or, or trademarks or anything like that, or their IP, it is fine. Um, it, it's actually very rare nowadays to come up with a brand new original idea that nobody has ever thought of before. Um, and if you look at all the different super successful businesses out there, um, you can probably think of two or three or more that are doing the same thing. Okay. So I want to just sort of debunk that right now. You have an idea and you're like, ah, oh, but it's already been done. Somebody else is already doing it. You do it your way. The world needs that particular thing the way, the only way that you can deliver it. The next common myth is that entrepreneurs have to work 24-7, 365 in order to be successful. Listen, this is just not the case. Are there people who, who have this mentality? Absolutely. Okay. Is it necessary? Not in the slightest. Okay. A lot of the, a lot of people are attracted to entrepreneurship or owning their own business because, you know, the thing that attracts them is the flexibility and the freedom that can come when you are your own boss, when you have your own business. Um, do we work hard? Of course. Is there a lot of work involved? Yes. But you know, in a matter of fact, I think it's one of the toughest jobs that's out there, but your success as an entrepreneur does not have to come at the expense of your mental or physical health, of your important relationships, of your personal life or your happiness, right? You can find a, a balance or a harmony between all those areas of your life. Um, and you can do that without subscribing to hustle culture, without that hustle and grind mentality um, that you have to be working from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed. Okay. And then the last one I want to share with you is that entrepreneurs take crazy risks. They risk it all and, and, you know, and then, and, and hope that it pays off. Now it's true. Entrepreneurs do take risks, but they learn to take calculated risks. Right. One example that comes to mind um, that, uh, you know, I, I hear often is Bill Gates and the story that he dropped out of Harvard to open up his own business. And voila, he's, you know, one of the most successful individuals. Um, but if you actually look into the story, yes, he dropped out of Harvard to pursue uh, an opportunity, but he didn't just drop out and walk away and say, like, there's no plan B. Uh, he, it's this or nothing. He took a leave, which he got permission from the school to do, and he could go back. So, you know, it, it was a risk, yes, but it was a calculated one, right? He had other, opportun uh, other options if this didn't work out. So it's not about, you know, just betting it all on black and hope and hoping that it, it goes your way. It's about, um, you know, collecting as much information as you can um, and then taking, you know, making that best move, taking, taking the risk, but doing it in a way um, that is not, that is still going to allow you to move forward if it doesn't pan out the way you think it's going to. Okay. Let's dive into the entrepreneurial mindset, but first, what is mindset, right? Just let's just define this for a second. So mind, a mindset is simply the cognitive belief system that we have that consists of uh, a combination of our beliefs, our assumptions, our experiences, our knowledge. And we use that to process the information around us to help us make decisions and to guide our behavior. So everything that we've learned and experienced in our entire lives, right? Stacks upon each other. And it is what helps shape how we interact with the world around us, as well as our internal worlds, what we think about ourselves, um, as, as well as what we you know, think about and, and how we behave with others. So what is the entrepreneurial mindset? Well, the entrepreneurial mindset is, is just that, a cognitive belief system, but it's a specific set of beliefs, knowledge, and thought processes that drives entrepreneurial behaviors, okay? So I want to talk to you about 
um, the top five characteristics of entrepreneur of an entrepreneurial mindset. Now, I could probably make a list of 50 characteristics or more or traits that contribute to a successful entrepreneur. Um, but I've narrowed it down to the five that I believe that are absolutely critical. Okay, let's dive in. So number one, a commitment to self-development. Um, entrepreneurs know that they are their greatest asset. You are your greatest asset. And so they work consistently and are committed to doing the work um, in order to continuously improve. Um, this, is, this could be work on themselves, right? work on their, uh, in, in terms of like their mindset. Um, it could be skill development, right? Specific, maybe, uh, technical skills. It could be soft skills. Um, but they recognize that. So, you know, this one, this year is twofold. They recognize that they're always able to improve, but they also rec um, recognize that they are the foundation of their entrepreneurial success. So they do the work consistently to make sure they have a strong foundation. Um, this goes back to one of those myths about working 24 seven, 365. That is the fastest road to burnout. So part of an entrepreneurial mindset should include this commitment to self-development um, and, uh, and to taking care of yourself, right? And to do, to do that work. Um, whether this means something like, uh, you know, investing in a coach and um, getting a mentor, a therapist, uh, or a, uh, having a community of peers around to support you. Um, the other side of this is in terms of, of simple uh, skill development um, and recognizing that we, you know, and cultivating a what we call a growth mindset. Um, this is a, coin, a term coined by Carol Dweck, who is one of the leading researchers in this area. And she defines a growth mindset as the belief that intelligence and ability can be nurtured through learning and effort. So no matter where you are starting right now, you have the ability to learn whatever it is you need to, to grow into that next level that you are, that you desire. So the commitment to self-development. And, you know, when we talk about an entrepreneurial um, mindset. It's not just to get started, right? It is something that is consistently cultivated so that you can continue down, uh, down the journey, right? Over the long term, And, um, it's really, really important. I think this is a really, uh, this is why I put this one as number one, um, is just that recognition. I work with a lot of entrepreneurs and specifically when, um, you know, when I ask them the question, really successful entrepreneurs who, you know, ha have seven and eight figure businesses. Um, and they ask, you know, oftentimes they'll, they'll get asked what, you know, what was the, what was the difference? What was the key that got you to go from six to seven figures in your business or seven to eight figures in your business? And almost every single time without pause, they say mindset. And, and what they mean by that is just this, this commitment to themselves and cultivating the mindset that they require. And part of that is by taking care of themselves and, and recognizing that they are lifelong learners and that, that, that lifelong learning is possible. So always kind of going back and committing to getting yourself to that next level as you go down this path. Number two is trust your inner compass. Now, if I had to pick a, a characteristic or a trait, you know, for this one, um, I would probably say a confidence and then that, and, and leading to your intuition or that inner compass. Um, but confidence, I want you to think right now, how do you define confidence for yourself? If I say, what's the definition of confidence to you? What would you, what would you say? Just want you to think about that for a second. Most of the time when I ask that question, I hear something about, you know, confident people, they're very sure of themselves or they're, they're, they show up and they're very knowledgeable. They know what to do and what to say, you know, in, in a given situation. And they're very, there's amount of certainty and that's a tall order to live up to, right? Always knowing what to say, what to do, knowing all the things and being able to do it well or execute well, right? I hear that often. I want to offer you a different definition of confidence 
this definition has served me over and over in my life and in my business. And it was offered to me by my mentor and it's come in handy way more times than I can count. My definition of confidence is simply your belief in your ability to figure things out. Okay? Your belief in your ability to figure things out. I don't need to know everything. I don't have to have all the knowledge or all the skills right now, but I'm confident because I believe in my ability to figure it out. If I study, if I learn, if I get the support that I need, I will get there. That is where confidence stems from. So trusting your inner compass is about having the confidence to trust your intuition. And this can show up in a number of different ways. Um, but, you know, believing in yourself that you are making the right decision, given what you know right now, and being able to move on that is trusting your inner compass, not comparing yourself to everybody and everything out there and then holding yourself back, right? Where you're like, oh, I think this is a good idea. And then you jump on Instagram or you jump on Facebook and somebody is doing it like, oh, that's a way better idea, right? Or, oh, they're already doing it. And then you stop. Having that, that confidence and that feeling of, hey, I think this is a good idea. And putting that information out there, putting out that message, um, sharing that idea and having the confidence to do so is crucial. We live in a, you know, a compare and despair society, right? We have so much information in front of us at any given time. And if you don't have to look very hard to find somebody doing what you want to be doing, and our first instinct is to compare ourselves to them. And part of the entrepreneurial mindset is being aware of what's out there, but not to the point where it's going to hold you back from, from action. That's going to hold you back from doing what you want to do. There are a million and one ways to do something. Listening to your heart and what your heart is telling you to do is a skill that entrepreneurs develop. Um, you know, a number of super successful people have, you know, spoken on this, Richard Branson, uh, Oprah, um, Steve Jobs have all talked about the, how their intuition has led them to some of the greatest decisions of their, you know, of their lives and business. Um, and I want to share a quote with you here from Oprah, who said, I've trusted the still small voice of intuition my entire life. And the only time I've made mistakes is when I didn't listen. Okay. So start trusting yourself, start listening to that voice and start to move on what that voice is telling you to do. Number three, number three is around decision-making. It's about taking decisive action. To succeed as an entrepreneur, you have to be able to gain the ability to look at a problem or a situation, digest all of the available information that you can, and then make a confident decision to move forward. Because your ability as a decision maker can make or break your future success. In fact, at the opposite end of that, indecision is one of the greatest causes of business failure. When you can't decide what to do, um, you delay taking action, right? In other words, you do nothing. When you have what we call analysis paralysis, there's so many options in front of you or there's so much information um, that you get paralyzed and you don't know what to do. So you simply do nothing. So many dreams uh, and businesses have failed because someone has failed to take action. So what I want to invite you to do now is redefine failure because this is what successful entrepreneurs do. They don't look as failure as an ending, right? They look at failure as uh, an opportunity to learn and to improve. So the ability to learn from your mistakes is absolutely crucial. Entrepreneurs look at failure as a natural part of the journey to success. If you let 
failure stop you, your entrepreneurial journey is going to be extremely, is going to be an extremely short one. Um, when you think about failure, it's a scary word, right? And it's really defined as a lack of success or an inability to um, meet a specific expectation. The problem is that we can read too much into failure. And one of the biggest challenges um, that we face is linking what we consider failure, failure to our self-worth. When a business idea fails, when uh, you, know, you take a risk and it doesn't pan out, we think of ourselves as a failure as opposed to just maybe a failed project. Um, so we oftentimes the expectations that we set that we don't meet, they're our own. They're expect, uh, expectations that we've uh, created in our head. And then when we don't meet them, we can we consider that a failure. So there, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a saying called fail fast, fail forward. Um, and I really love this. And I remind myself of this all the time about failing forward. And this is, um, this is just what we're talking about here, your ability to learn from your mistakes and take that lesson forward into the future with you. Um, it can be really, really challenging if you are, if you get stopped um, by setbacks, right? Setbacks are going to pause us for a second, but they're opportunities and they're signs to look and see what's ahead of us, look and, and see what's around us. How can we take that information and, you know, that we learned today and do better tomorrow? So how can you become more decisive? If this is something that you really struggle with, decision-making, you know, you go over and over back and forth in your mind. Should I, shouldn't I, should I buy it? Should I not? Should I go there? Shouldn't I? You want to start flexing your decision-making muscle. Um, so a practice that you can do is next time you are out for a meal, give yourself five minutes and five minutes only to scan the menu and then decide, decide exactly what you're going to have for dinner, close the menu, do it confidently, Okay. What's the worst that can happen? You order it. You don't like it. You know that now I don't like that dish and I won't order it again. Right. The only way to be able to flex or, or to the, the, the only way to build the decision-making muscle is to flex it. So start with the smallest decisions, um, and continue to do this in your life in all the areas. Um, just, just make a decision. Yes. No, I'm going to go for it. I'm not. Okay. And because it takes practice to master. Um, and, and this is how it begins is these little things, what you're going to wear, right? Stop spending an hour figuring out what it is you're going to wear, changing a million times, pick your outfit, put it on and go. Okay. Number four is I kind of snuck two in here, but is accountability and discipline. And I, and I put them both in here because I feel like you really can't have one without the other. So accountability means taking responsibilities for your actions. Um, this is so key. And it's a lesson I wish that everybody who wants to own their own business, be an entrepreneur, go down that path, learns early. Uh, unfortunately, not everybody does. But you're in a different place now, okay? If you choose to become an entrepreneur, if you choose to open your own business or you know, start going down this path, you have to be able to understand and accept that everything that happens to your business with your customers, your employees is your responsibility. You are accountable for everything. The buck stops with you. Accountability means that even if the circumstances are not your fault, right? You still take responsibility and start taking steps to fix the problem. This is a hard lesson to learn, but entrepreneurship, successful entrepreneurship is, is playing the long game, right? And you're building your credibility, you're building your reputation and taking accountability puts all that responsibility where it should with you, the business owner, okay? How you can keep yourself accountable is through discipline. And discipline, if you 
you know, kind of narrow it down to the most simplest definition to me is simply keeping promises to yourself, doing what you say, saying what you do, honoring your word. Okay. Consistently over the long term. So how do you stay disciplined? How do you develop some discipline and accountability? One area I find extremely helpful for this is developing the skill of planning. Um, an entrepreneur's day, weeks, months are typically filled, right? With calls, with meetings, with work, with projects, lots of things going on. Um, and there's so many things you could be doing. Um, and it's easy to be, to be sucked into distraction. So something that I find really, really helpful is creating a practice of planning out your day, week, month, and year. And when you do this, you have something to be accountable for, and you have a system in place to start to practice discipline. So uh, I absolutely love my Sunday evening uh, planning sessions. I look ahead at the week, see what's coming up. If there's something on my calendar that you know doesn't need to be there anymore, isn't a priority anymore, I take it off. Um, and I start to think about what do I need to make sure gets done this week? And I go day by day. And I use a strategy in organizing my days called time blocking. Time blocking is a time management um, strategy, right? Or, or scheduling format that sets aside specific blocks of time for specific activities, okay? You're breaking up your day into allotted segments of time, and this will help to boost your productivity, your creativity, and get things done quicker, okay? So what this looks like in practice is, you know, opening up your calendar um, instead of, okay, well, I'm going to work today from nine till five, and I'm going to get a whole bunch of stuff done. I've got a to-do list to do. What happens? We often get sucked into distraction, emails, social media, somebody knocking on your door if you're working from home, the laundry calling you from down the hall. So many distractions. If you have a schedule that you create and that you honor, you're going to see your productivity, your discipline, and your accountability increase exponentially. So when I say specific tasks, I'm meaning you're breaking up your day from nine until 10. You are let's say, you know, reaching out and following up with your customers, okay? From 10 until 11, you allow yourself to check emails um, or to check the emails that have come in. From 11 until 12, you are going to uh, write a blog article, right? And publish. 12 to 12.30, you're taking lunch. 12.30 to 1.30, right? And you're detailing the specific tasks you are going to accomplish. This will keep you on track this will help to uh, create that discipline in looking ahead at your priorities, being able to start to see any challenges that are coming up because, because you're in it, right? Um, and by honoring the schedule, honoring the promise that you've made to yourself helps to build that discipline. All right, number five. Number five is accepting abundance. So what is abundance or an abundance mindset? Well, an entrepreneur with an abundance mindset knows that there is enough to go around for everyone. This is a conversation I have so often with my clients around this abundance versus scarcity kind of mindset. Entrepreneurs that recognize this and understand it, they tend to move forward in life with fulfillment and contentment and confidence in not only what they have, but what they're capable of having because they believe in the power to create what they want. They believe that the universe is conspiring for them and not against them. And they believe that there is more than enough to go around. We don't have to be grasping at straws. You know, my success does not have to come at the expense of somebody else's. Right? The opposite of abundance is scarcity and having that scarcity mindset that, uh, that, that is, is just that, that your success uh, needs to come at the expense of someone else's. And this simply isn't the case. Abundance leads to freedom, fulfillment, and happiness, overall life satisfaction. 
Because when you recognize that there is more than enough for everyone, you aren't constantly worried about where is that next dollar from? Where is that next sale coming from? Um, what is the next move? How do I be strategic and get ahead of everybody? You have the time and the freedom to connect with your why. And the why is, you know, why did you start this business in the first place? What kind of impact were you hoping to make? When we're focused on what we're getting, we're focused on that bottom line, right? We're not able, we, we lose sight of the why. And the why is what helps us, um, you know, be able to ride out the waves, you know, in this journey. And it also is what allows us to um, truly appreciate uh, all that we do achieve. The most successful entrepreneurs, they know their why they connect with it every single day. And on the deepest level, uh, it's, and, and it's not money, right? Uh, it's, it's definitely not money. This is, this is a problem because as long as you're worrying about where the next dollar comes from, you'll never be able to unleash your why into the world. And it's the why it, that separates you from everybody else. It's the key to achieving the business that you desire. But the only way to tap into it is to be free. And the only way to become free and experience that freedom is to enjoy abundance every single day. Okay. Not letting that scarcity mindset eke in and start to suck the joy out of the business that you're creating. Um, so I just want to make one more point on you know, money as a motivator, because, um, I'm not going to deny that, that money is great. And that's, you know, part of a business is to make money. Um, but it should not be the sole motivator. Um, because if it is, you won't have a business for very long. The thing around watching the dollar is that you'll realize that you will never achieve and realize true success when money is the measure because we'll never have enough right? I hear it all the time. Once my business hits six figures, then they get to six figures. And, they, and, and instead of celebrating, instead of being grateful for, for what's happened, uh, for what they've achieved, they just push that goalpost out even further. Um, okay. When, it, once I hit, uh, six figures and I hire, you know, two more team members, they get there, they push it out. Once I hit seven figures and you're constantly chasing it and never enjoying it. So connecting with your why is such a key factor in this whole equation. And the way to be able to do that is to start to accept that abundance exists, that there's abundance in the world, that there's more than enough to go around for everyone. And you're not letting that scarcity, uh, you're not letting that scarcity hold you back. Entrepreneurs, I, I said this earlier uh, in this workshop, but entrepreneurs, they, they know that it's about playing the long game. People who are motivated by the, by the bottom line are often the same people who want it immediately, right? They want that immediate return, that immediate ROI. And they want uh, that overnight success story. But here's the thing. The truth of it is every overnight success story is 15 years in the making, right? So I want to offer you a bonus uh, characteristic here, which is patience. It's not an easy one by any means, but it is really important. And understanding that uh, entrepreneur, entrepreneurship really does require a massive degree of patience um, and being able to understand that at the outset, that, you know, just because you do, you make two or three moves, you may not get the, the outcome that you want but it's about making two or three moves, looking at what happened, learning the lesson, making two or three more moves, reassessing, doing two or three more moves and continuing down, uh, down the line. So if you struggle with patience, uh, I have a tip for you. Try delaying gratification as much as possible in your everyday life. So, you know, those little rewards that we give ourselves, you know, if I go to the gym, I'm going to, you know, get that, the, the, you know, Jamba juice on the way home. Or if I do X, I'm going to give myself Y instead of rewarding yourself right after that thing, 
try delaying it for an hour, okay? And start pushing back the marker. You know the reward is coming, okay? That's a guarantee. You know it's coming. It just may not come immediately after you do the thing. All right, so let's recap. So we've talked about the five key characteristics with a few bonuses thrown in uh, around what makes up the entrepreneurial mindset. So number one was a commitment to self-development. Number two was trusting your inner compass. Number three was taking decisive action. Number four, accountability and discipline. And number five was accepting abundance with a bonus trait or a bonus characteristic of exercise and patience. Now, what I've shared with you today may sound simplistic, but it's not easy. In fact, it's extremely challenging and entrepreneurship really isn't for the faint of heart. These are skills that need to be developed and trained into mastery. And that takes time, dedication, uh, strength. It takes perseverance and grit to develop this kind of mindset. It's one thing to be able to read these and say, yeah, that makes sense. I could do that or I'm doing that. But it's not just doing it in one situation. It's cultivating this as a mindset. So this is the way that you begin to operate. This is the way that you begin to see and interact with the world and everybody that you encounter in it. Um, and once you do this, it will serve you. Once you cultivate this kind of mindset, it will serve you over and over again, and not just in business, but in every area of your life. So thank you so much for joining me for this workshop. I I hope that you got some value out of it. Uh, and if there's, if there's any questions, you can ask the organizers. I am more than happy to connect with any of you to answer some questions or, uh, you know, or share some information or, or more information or clarification on anything that I've talked about today. So thank you and enjoy the rest of the conference.